Hello, 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 one, hello, all. Welcome back to the Agostino Zinga Show number 118 with me, your host, Agostino. What's going on? How you doing? How you feeling? Hope you're good. Hope you're well rested, well hydrated, well lubricated, and above all, your limbs are nice and limber. I'm feeling amazing. Thank you for asking. I've just got back from a very um, intense, vigorous workout. That you know what happened when I worked out today? Because I haven't worked out in a while in the gym because I run a lot these days. I'm doing a lot of running. I'm doing a lot of cardio. I'm doing a lot of circuit training outside in the great outdoors that is Stratford and the surrounding areas. I've ten, I've kind of uh, pulled away from going to the gymnasium because the gymnasium next to me is a council-funded or government-funded gymnasium. Uh, that's not the bad thing about it because it's fairly well-priced. It has good facilities. The people that work there are great. And generally, the vibe is quite cool in there. The problem is that it's not a cool place. I'm not saying cool as in a colloquial term. I mean cool as temperature. There's no windows or windows that you can actually open. And the air conditioning is a bit shitty. So with the amount of bodies that are in this L-shaped gymnasium and with the lack of air that's passing through the gymnasium, it ends up turning into a sauna or better yet, a hot box. You know those kids that they do now where they lock themselves into a car and they smoke their dual e-cigarettes? Is there anything worse than a dual e-cigarette? Eh? Is there anything worse than people that have e-cigarettes anyway in general or vapes? The whole idea of uh, having something, I guess that's why people, I guess if you see, if you ever seen anyone vape, they do that thing where, you know, when you see a girl on the train and she's eating and she does that thing where she hides. Girls do this thing where they don't want to like, they don't want people to see that they're eating. So they'll have the bag of sweets inside their handbag and they'll be like, you know, on the phone, you know, do, 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 scanning social media and then like picking, you know, like a little woodpecker, picking little bits outside, their, out, out from their bag. Um, people that smoke vapes or do like uh, e-cigarettes tend to do the same thing. They tend to like cover, you know, like imagine if I'm covering a mic like this, right? So they tend to like cover it. They tend to cover their vape and then suck it and then kind of blow it out quickly so you don't see what they're doing. Which is weird, isn't it? Because you've you'd think they were smoking crack or something. It's like it's perfectly legal. It's annoying, right? You're walking down the street and you suddenly get hit by fucking raspberries and mangoes, right? You're like, what the fuck is going on around? Then you turn around and some guy with a jewel on. It's weird because. I imagine the same people that vape, right, would probably give you dirty looks if you walk down the street with, like, a, a shisha thing. Like, puffing it. And you actually had a portal one. Or you're, you know, like, those, you know, like people that have uh, respiratory problems and they carry around, like, a little tank of, um, of, heat, of oxygen, like the guy in, in Ozark. If you walked around with, like, a little shisha thing and you were puffing it down the street, people will give you such weird looks. But they don't if you've got this little fucking cartridge and you're sucking on it like it's a penis and then blowing air into or blowing smoke into the air. That's not that's not weird, right? Fucking hell. Some people, man. But yeah, um, so today um, I went to the gym and obviously the gym's too hot. That's why I've been pulling away from it. I've been working out in the street, doing my cardio workouts. But I decided to go in today and I went a bit too heavy. I ended up uh, swinging way too heavy of a kettlebell. I swung like a 24 kg kettlebell for three rounds. Uh, 35 times for 30 times which is what 90 times and i tweaked my back on the last 10 i could feel a little twinge in my back now like a lower back you know like um yeah man it's a big mistake really because i'm, I'm usually quite good with kind of easing myself back into workouts i usually do a good job in terms of slowly progressing the weights up and not trying to go for my max but i usually throw around a 24 kg kettlebell quite easily but when i think about it i did that previously when i was working out in a gym three times a week right now i haven't i haven't worked out in a gym in maybe a month or maybe two months i've been running this whole time so um i'm probably haven't got the strength that i thought i had in my lower back which you know which has been proved by the fact that I might tweak my back. So I've got a bit of a tweak back, but it should be fine after a while. I'm going to come back and do some um, mobility exercises that I've got with the guy from uh, with Kelly Starrett. He's got that website called Mobility World, which I signed up for. It's like $10 a month and you get a workout that you can kind of, and you get basically a website that has loads of workouts and they're all divided by um, their body part. So if you've got something wrong with your elbow, with your knee, with your back, with your wrist, with your ankles, you can get loads of um, workouts that are basically mobility workouts, which which basically effectively um you kind of smash the flesh and some of the muscle and the joints in terms of kind of get them nice and loose. So there's loads. So I think the basic equipment you'll probably need is a, a lacrosse ball, like a hard kind of lacrosse ball. You probably need a roller, uh, a foam roller to, to use it well. And that'll probably be it. And maybe a resistant band that you can probably like, lock under a door 
or some shit but it's fairly easy to use i really highly recommend it if you've got any sort of tweaks or any sort of um you know sport related or just generally general wear and tear injuries like if you've you know when you're running on the stairs in a train and you kind of overextend your legs sometimes and you get a little twinge on the inside of your calf um or the inside of your thigh sorry that's really a good opportunity too, to use mobility well there's loads of exercises there where you can kind of you know get the range of motion uh back into your calf and sometimes it hurts it really does hurt a lot it hurts a lot it hurts a lot more than putting a pack of ice on it which is what people tend to do when you're in frame but actually moving through the ranges of motion tends to help a lot more i don't know the science behind it i don't know why it works but it does work a lot more than icing your joint so i highly recommend you do that um yeah apart from that it's been pretty good um end of towards end of sober october like i mentioned previously i think i'm gonna hang up my sober october gloves on friday because I'm, I'm djing on friday at tap east for a night called tap you can find more info about that on my website at www.axiozinger.com but I'm going to hopefully go to Fold after I finish and go to the vi visit party number one. Fold, the new nightclub open up in Canning Town. That is the new, the first kind of 24-hour nightclub that we have in London. Um, because uh, Bubba Stilts and a few other people are going to be playing there. So I'm probably going to go there on Friday night. And, I'm, you know, it's unlikely I'll be able to go in that dark, dingy place without getting on it like Sonic. So I'm probably going to hang up my thing. But, you know, four weeks is pretty good. I've done a solid month of non-drinking, non, you know, no drug taking or anything of that like, which has been fairly, um, which has had an amazing benefit to me. I think I'm probably going to do, a, I'll probably do a recap show about how I feel thoughts overall. I would say the drug thing has been a lot easier than probably the drunk, the drinking thing, which is, again, ironic, right? Or, which is funny if you think about it, right? Um, you'd think you'd probably miss drugs more you miss alcohol but i think the alcohol has been more of a more of a struggle to fight against mainly because i just dj every weekend and i'm always in a bar and i'm always surrounded by people that are already drunk and you're not drunk and it's just you know that it's a bit of a weird friction but in that same respects too i've also have i've also gained a huge respect for people that don't drink when they're djing and i've also gained an appreciation for maybe starting my set the first two hours because usually I play like four hour sets, whatever. The first two hours, I, I'm getting appreciation of just having water, of just getting into the vibe. And then once I kind of feel nice and loose and I've limbered up, I can start drinking. Because if I'm honest, which I don't think I probably said to myself, but if I'm completely honest, I think some of the part, well, part of the reason why I would drink um, a lot before I started or I preaching before I went to play a set, sometimes I would, I would even have uh, a couple of whiskeys at home before I went out. Well, because I was nervous, right? I didn't want to do a bad job, right? Um, a lot of these sets aren't really like, you know, they're not super popular. It's not like there's hundreds of thousands of people in the room. But you want to do a good job, right? You don't want to disappoint people. You don't want to um, annoy somebody. Because that's the one thing I've always felt whenever you go to like a bar that's quiet and that's got a DJ. Sometimes the DJ has a tendency to annoy everyone, right? Just playing like stupid tunes that don't really match their environment. Um, really loud. Um, really fast tempo, just really weird. You know, when you go to a bar that's not that busy and DJ's just like playing like he's in, he's, he's, he's playing the main set of fabric. Like, it's just annoying. So I never wanted to be that guy. And also I wanted to do a good job to get caught back again, right? Because that's the main, that's a like main mark of success, right? Um, especially if you're, if, I'm, if you're not promoting, if you're not the one that's putting on the event and you want people to sell tickets and you want people to come and buy drinks. If you're just a DJ, the main kind of like um, stamp of approval is that the bar invites you back and says, oh, we want you back for another night or when are you free next? That's the stamp of approval of like, oh, you've done a good job. So, um, blah, blah, blah. so again, the appreciation of like, you know, maybe for the first two hours not drinking, but also I've also understood that maybe I was doing that in the past because I was so nervous. But now I'm a bit more comfortable in what I do, uncomfortable in my ability, uncomfortable in how good I am. I know that I'm good, but I'm just, you know, I've got to kind of get better by just doing more reps and sets. So that's been quite cool. And the drug thing, especially weed, right? I think in general, I think I've just sacked off the whole weed during the week. I just can't do it, man. Uh, I've heard, I think when you, when, when, you, when you listen to as much Joe Rogan as I do, and you start watching those guys and you start paying attention to what those guys do, you get this idea that, you know, weed is like the key to unlocking your creativity and it allows you to kind of, um, it kind of allows you to bring down your guards and to kind of be a little bit more vulnerable and to open yourself up to new experiences, blah, 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 blah. When you listen to Joe Rogan, you get that sense, right? But there is a caveat to it where that most, in that most of the people that are speaking to Joe Rogan or the main, main majority, especially if they're comedians or MMA fighters or entertainers in general, most of these people... Um, don't have a full-time job they don't have a nine-to-five right and I think 
weird for me, especially having a nine to five, having the stress or the mental, it occupies up, it occupies a mental space in my brain, right? It might not be stressful. It might not be something that keeps me up at night. It might, not, it might not be something that gives me cold sweats, but it's something that occupies my brain. Like, you know, you're always aware that you have to work. You're always aware you have to wake up at a certain time and go to a certain place at a certain time. So I think without that anxiety, without that kind of like um, thing hanging over your head, right? Apart from going to do sets or apart from, you know, maybe keeping an eye on your phone in turn, maybe you might get called um, so you can do a set or in terms of maybe, I don't know, meeting somebody up for a podcast interview, whatever. For the most part, those guys don't have that worry. So I think maybe weed would work quite well, right? In that kind of scenery, in that kind of setting. But for me in general, or just or just, or just just biologically, I just think for me generally, it just doesn't work during the week because any weed I smoke, whether it's an indica or sativa, I, it just knocks me out. I just get tired. Um, I just get lazy. I just want to watch stuff. From, I just want to watch YouTube videos, right? It doesn't enable me to do anything um, creative or to do anything. Um, or when you do any sort of hard work, I just don't do it. I guess my brain is associated weed with like the weekend, right? The you know last shift on Friday, you end a bit earlier. You probably don't stay for drinks because you're so desperate to go back home and roll a joint, right? It's that kind of idea of like, oh, I can finally put my feet up and rest. Like the weekend's here, even though like you know I'm not a big like oh hey hey weekend weekend kind of guy. You know maybe the the weed is like you know a, a good signifier that you can you can just rest and put your feet up. But in general, anyway, like I've just got too much to do during the week. Like, you know, on top of the podcast, on top of a pair of mixes, on top of writing on my blog, check that out, defaultgoon.net or defaultgoon.com, sorry. Um, on top of all the other shit that I'm doing in terms of selling online, like there's just not enough time in the day for me to like smoke weed and be productive. I just can't do it. Um, so I just have to kind of block out time in a weekend or block out time when I go on a holiday and maybe do it that way. That might work. But I think I've just realized that the weed thing, I've not really missed that hard. I've not really missed that badly. I think that's been quite easy to knock on the head, <clears throat> knock on his head, sorry. And um, yeah, I'm fortunate in that regard. <clears throat> but I guess, again, like I said, I mentioned before, it's like the whole drinking thing. It's weird how how, how much that is a crux socially, right? Because I think I mentioned it the other day to the brunette. Because um, she has a lot of problems or issues with her friends sometimes when they're being annoying and, you know, do that surprise face when you don't want to drink. Like, you don't want to have another, you don't want to drink. Oh my God, how come? What's going on? Right? It's always that same thing. Right? You know, when you, like when you're eating a salad. Someone's like, oh, you're eating a salad. Or, oh, are you trying to lose weight? Are you working out? Are you trying to be fit? There's always a question behind it. But when you're eating a fucking baguette from Pret, no one asks you anything. Right? If you've got one of those, like, lovely, um, cauliflower parmesan things that they make right there's mac and cheese thing no one asks you are oh, what are you doing training for the past olympics no one gives a fucking fuck right but the moment you put together a salad right only thing anything my um slightly healthy like a, a bit of like you know chicken breast or some fucking smoked fillet or what you got, a steamed salmon with some greens or whatever it may be everyone everyone in their fucking mum has got a question for you and why you're eating like that and what you aim to do and they start talking to you about the workouts they did it's just such a it's so annoying isn't it so i guess it's annoying so i guess the same thing happens um with drinking um the brunette gets that a lot with her friends where like you know when someone's getting up to get around and they go around and you're like the one that says like no i'm not drinking today or i don't want to drink and then the next question is why and you're like oh i'm not drinking today and it's just a fucking barrage of questions it's like leave me alone but I can understand, you know, in that, in that environment. Again, I just think sometimes, having been a having been a an enthusiastic drinker, right? I think what happens is that you, when someone says that to you, it's like they immediately pop a mirror in front of your face, like, ah, look, look how much of a fuck up you are! Look, look at your face!" I think that's what happens. So then, what you end up doing is that you don't want to look at yourself, so you just keep talking to the person. You're like pulling the mirror. Oh, hold on, Let's move, move that mirror. Wait. You just keep constantly trying to move the mirror and speak to the person, so you'd have to see yourself. And then you want them to join your. Um, you going. You want to kind of jump on your train so that you're not alone because it's very. It's a, it's a very lonely experience, right? When you ask, it's like when you offer. It's probably when you. It's like when you offer someone a joint, or maybe right. And no one wants it. It's like, oh, okay, fucking hell. I guess I'm the weirdo. That's only one. Do you know what I mean? It's that, that kind of idea, maybe. Um, I think so. Again, it's just me hypothesizing. I don't know about it. But there is a weird thing when it comes to eating healthy and saying that you're not drinking that brings out the inner FBI agent in, in everyone that kind of asks you questions about it. Um, so I guess that's been the main reason why it's been a bit of a crux, it's been a bit of an issue for me personally going, um, in general. But I've been lucky again. I mentioned before I've been lucky because I DJ. So I'm just in a booth. I'm not necessarily around people, 
So I don't necessarily have the pressure of like, oh, do you want a drink? I can, you know, I mean, I just, I can just get them when I want. Or when a bartender comes around, she might ask me once, oh, you're not drinking today. But that's it. She'll forget by 10 minutes later because if I have a Coke or Coca-Cola, whatever, which I had, um, which I made a mistake of having the last two weekends, I was farting out of my face. But if I have a Coke, she'll just refill it. And just ask me, oh, do you want this refilled? I was like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that makes it a bit easier. So you don't need to kind of go through that, um, you know, obstacle course of like, why are you not drinking? Blah, 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 blah. But, you know, again, I understand. It doesn't bother me that much, to be honest. I can get, I can, I can understand. And to be honest as well, it's like, it's like the whole social media thing, being the people being into social media, like, it's annoying what people do with the whole drinking thing, but you, there is an option. You have got several options there. You know, one of the options is that you just don't go out. You stay in, right? You just avoid all of that nonsense. So it's not that big of a deal, I don't think, personally. Um, and again, I think people just need to, like, chill the fuck out when it comes to all that stuff anyway. But enough about that. More about other things I wanted to speak about. Might as well dive into a couple of topics here. This might be a short one today because I've got to jet off soon and head off to W. O R K. Oh, and talking about W O R K. How annoying, um, or how how not how annoying. I'm I'm a I'm a much better team player than I was a, f- a few years ago, right? I think a few years ago I would have kicked up much of much more of a fuss in certain situations, or I would have made it very aware. I would have made it very known that I wasn't happy with what was going on, or I didn't like this, right? X Y and Z. But I think. As the, the more you grow up, the more you start to realize that, you know, certain things are not in your control. Certain battles are not worth fighting. And generally, you just don't give a shit because you know you're, you're, you're destined for bigger and brighter things, right? In your own future, right? So I think, you know, I think very highly of myself. I trust in my ability, but I know I've just got to put the work in. And hopefully, um, with a bit of luck and a bit of hard work and a bit of talent, it will hopefully come through. Hopefully, you realize my potential. But sometimes, you know... You put in a situation where you're reminded, Jesus Christ, man. Like sometimes W O R K W O R K situations suck ass, right? So I'm in between moving occupations, and you know you have to go through this whole song and dance of announcing that you're leaving, um, and announcing you want to do a leaving drinks, announcing all this nonsense, right? And for the most part, it's a bit, it's a bit. There's no point in it, really, right? Because for the most part, especially, and well, most people who are working companies only have the only colleagues or friends that they have are the ones that are on their team right or or in yeah on their team for the most part they don't necessarily talk to anybody else right but if you if you do and you're like me and you're a bit of a fucking social whore then you might have a few other people that you speak to but it's still you know it doesn't necessarily need a mass email you just the people that you speak to you they'll they'll speak to you they'll ask you questions about where you're going and you mention to them hey by the way if you want to have a drink i'm having a drink on this day Right, you don't necessarily need, need to put out an email, but today or the other day, I had to go through the whole song and dance of having an email sent out, and it's just, it's so cringe, man. It's so so cringe. But you know, you again, I'm I'm a bit be- I'm a better team player than I was a few months ago or a few years ago. Maybe I would have probably more kicked up more of a fuss, but I was just like, oh, can this end? So when will this end? But you know, again, you know, what can you do? You just have to play. You just have to play along. And hope it fucking dies soon. But yeah, um, the moving in between places is a bit annoying. Especially the whole notice period thing. It's like, you know, dying by a thousand cuts. You know, it just takes so long for it to be over. Um, in some respects, it's nice too as well, to be honest. To kind of like, you know, close one chapter and start another one. There is, a, again, I mentioned before, another time where it's nice to be the one to say you want to go. Right? As opposed to someone saying, your shit, fuck off. That's always nice, right? Um uh but in general it's still weird right both both of them are both occasions are weird when someone says the fuck off is weird because you know it's you that's that's your kind of world and your reality even though i i do persuade people not to get wrapped up or not to you know not to um base most of their their personality or their persona or who they are or to seek fulfillment from an occupation or from a job because it's something that can get taken away from you in an instant right it's like putting all your faith and love and hopes into somebody else's you know, relationship with. I think it's good. In some respects, but sometimes it can be dangerous too because when that person has had enough of you or they decide to go seek past as new, your whole world is going to encave on you, right? So I don't necessarily believe in us, you know? I believe in kind of tapping into yourself and believing in your own message. But in general, even if you are that, per- even if, if you have that tendency, it can be kind of rough, you know? Even if you do move off your own will, if you move jobs to your of your own regard, um, of your own accord, sorry, and if you get told to fuck off, it can be strange because you know, 
your whole per- your whole person was wrapped up in there, right? You had your way, you had your kind of commute in the morning, right? Um, yeah, you had your commute in the morning. You had your lunch buddies. You had the, you know, you had your kind of like schedule of how often you got up to get a coffee, when you want to go get a snack, when you went to have a cigarette, when you went to go and disturb this person at their desk or at their station or in their zone or in the kitchen. I mean, you had your little thing that you did, right? You had your little routine. So when that gets taken away from you, it can be a weird, a really, really weird mindfuck. But again, it it probably goes back to the whole idea, like the whole working thing. The whole being with other adults for eight hours a day for five days a week just like school again it's just strange i don't think we should be doing that which is probably why on fridays or sometimes if you work in a big office and you see people run out on fridays really quickly like cockroaches right they don't want to talk to anyone or people that just run to a station don't want to have another chat on the train line with somebody from work it's because you know you spend so much time with people at work they don't, you don't really want to spend time with you know you don't want these forced relationships right it's kind of like um these kind of open plan workplaces that kind of meant to foster collaboration, but don't do any. But oh, the only thing they do is like you know force um, distraction or get you know force these kind of fake friendships. So the last thing you want to do is stay any bit longer, stay a longer at your workplace. You want to just run home and kind of meet your own friends. So it might kind of lend itself to the idea that maybe you know a couple if if, if they knocked off a couple of days right in a week, especially for like mid um, entry level to mid level jobs, right? If they gave you a couple of days off in a week. So you worked three days a week or maybe they just did one and you worked four days a week and you had uh, three days off. I think you'd, you'd, you'd get, if not more, the same amount of work done, honestly. Maybe high end, maybe like um, upper management, you might have to work like, you know, two, week, two weeks of the month. You might have to work four and another one, you have to work five. But I think that's more, that's more, um, that probably lends itself more to the kind of human experience. Because I know we are social creatures, but I don't think in that regard, man. Like this forced social, this forced um, social gatherings at work, eight hours a day, all the time, again and again and again. Then you want to leave, you have to give notice, you have to stay another month, again and again and again. Then it's a fucking leaving due, again and again and again. Then you start the new job, and it's a fucking um, what they call it, um, it's probation period and all that sort of malarkey, again and again and again. You having to, do you know I mean, it's just, uh, it just doesn't stop. Like it's just fuck. And then you wonder why people are getting so um, angry and pissed off on social media and they want to be fucking social media activists because they don't have anything to do. They want a purpose, right? And you, you find purpose and meaning through these like fake outrage things that you get upset about on social media that no one in their right mind is paying attention to in real life. No one cares, right? I saw something recently about Kendall Jenner being accused of cultural appropriation because she had a, a, a haircut that looked like an, that looked like an afro but looked more like a haircut you might have seen a woman wear back in the Tudor times, right? Like a kind of puffed out thing, right? And she's being accused of culturally appropriating afro. It's like, <coughs> <coughs> it's like, what in the fucking fuck? The average person on the street doesn't care. They're busy trying to pay council tax and keep the light on and feed their kids. It's like... I don't know. I don't know. It just it just worries me a lot. Those kind of things. And I think, in, like I said, the dream obviously is to kind of do my own thing, get that up and running, and be away from the whole employment racket. But there's, I'm gonna have so many good stories, especially for, especially when I get grow some balls and decide to do stand up. I'm gonna have so many good jokes to tell. Hopefully, right? I will have so many good premises. I'm saying not good jokes. I have so many good premises to kind of lean off of, right? Like how weird it is to be at work. Like just the whole idea of like you know saying good morning to people like i probably don't even say good morning to the brunette in the like in the morning like, i just ignore her and go out do you know what I, mean? I probably don't even say i didn't even say good morning to my mum sometimes when i used to live at home but every day you say good morning to people that you work with you tell them goodbye right you remember their birthday like, i don't know it's fucking nuts do you know what i mean like it's so weird and then people wonder why weird sexual harassment cases come happen at workplaces like the lines are so blurry you know you spend way too many t- way too m- in in general anyway pe- men and women shouldn't be in a enclosed environment like that especially a forced environment like that anyway right some women wouldn't even some women would purposely stay away from some guys in the bar if they would get their girlfriend because they don't want to be bothered how much more for when you're in a workplace i don't even know you and i have i have to work with you eight days a week and you're sitting next to me right and I wear what I wear. I don't care. Fuck you, right? But you're getting your ideas. You're getting your thoughts 
and you're getting fucking excited because I'm, I don't know, picking up your photocopying from the machine and giving it to you so you don't have to stand up and you think I like you or something. It's just weird. Imagine how weird that is for a girl. Like, you're just being nice. Do you want a coffee? And all of a sudden, this guy thinks you want to suck his dick. Like, it's just a, you know what I mean, it's a strange, strange, strange place to be in. Very, 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 very strange. Like, team outings and stuff. Like, okay. It's just a weird, weird, weird environment. And I'm going to continue and I'm going to start this journey all over again next week, <laughs> which would be interesting. But yeah, let's see how it goes. I'm not, I'm not, um, what you call it? I'm, I, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be pretty cool. I think it's a role that's going to be interesting. So a role that's going to allow me to be a little bit more creative. It's a role that's going to allow me a little bit more autonomy. I'm going to have a lot more ownership. I'm going to, um, yeah, it should be interesting. And, and it's in a sector that I haven't worked in before. Um, I, I tend to I tend to do this quite often, which is maybe a, a um, it could be seen as a flaw, but I tend to move jobs quite often or more often than most people because I don't necessarily uh, hold them up in such high regard as other people do. Right? I don't see them as these hallowed, um, you know, holy grails. Like I'm not going to stay at a job for like five years. That isn't going to happen. Right? I'd rather move jobs in. Um, I'd rather have a job a year than stay in one place five years just because I'm going to feel like I am have momentum and I'm doing stuff. It's a bit false. Um, it's a bit fake, especially because I haven't got my own business. So I'm not doing my own thing. But, you know, I, I need that jump momentum to kind of give me, you know, life and whatever it may be. But I do do this, I do this thing where I tend to kind of change industries quite often. Like I'll be in one place, I'll be in one sector, whether it's fashion, whether it's tech, whether it's e-commerce. Uh, whatever it would manufacture I'll tend to move around right production whatever just because I want to kind of gain different experiences and because sometimes I feel like my skills can kind of lend itself to different areas but this one's going to be a this is a little bit outside my uh, realm of comfort just outside my realm of comfort which is good because if you read any any books on you know um, on kind of personal development they always say a good way to develop yourself or to kind of evolve is to kind of you know uh try and do a sk or try and do something that's just outside your realm just outside your circle of capabilities right just outside like not something too crazy where you're going to be crying into your pillow but something that's just outside of your um remit that would be that's usually the good way to kind of like um gain new skills and to gain a better understanding of what you can actually do and hopefully hopefully fingers crossed That'll be something that I'm going to be doing um, going forward in my new role that's going to start next week. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but apart from that, it's been a pretty, again, pretty somber uh, middle of the week. Pretty easy. Um, sober October is kind of getting wrapped up. Um, hopefully this Friday and then DJing again on the weekend. And that's going to be basically about it. Um, I wanted to keep this one nice and short because I'm going to come back with a super long one tomorrow. Cause I kind of left gym a bit late because I tweet as I mentioned I tweet my back so I kind of took a bit long to come out of the gym which uh sounds sounds a lot sounds worse than it what it sounds like but I guarantee you it hurt like a fucking motherfucker um one thing that I am wanting to talk about before I leave though um that I thought was fucking awesome have you guys seen the the new uh Yeezy Move the, the Yeezy 700s in the Move the kind of like dark brown color they're coming out this week aren't they or they're coming out at the end of the month sorry um, I think I might try and get a pair, man. They look so, so nice. I've worn my Yeezy 700s into the absolute ground. I've absolutely battered them so much. It's not even funny how much I've battered them. But I've seen a, a picture of these. They said they're coming out very, very soon. I think I saw them on Hypebeast. So they like a first look. Let me see if I can find a picture of them. But they look really nice. They're such a versatile trainer. And I, lo and I love the fact that, you know, they're, it's, a, it's like um, instead of bringing down all black pair, which aren't, they haven't been released just yet, you get this mauve that's going to go well with loads of dark colors. And then you get the gray that goes well with light colors. So I, I like that both shoes are quite easy to wear, quite versatile. I can mix and match them in different outfits. Um, that's been something that I've been looking for. Like, that's been something I've been looking with with shoes in general. I don't necessarily buy trainers as much as I used to back in the day. But if I do, and I do buy an expensive one, I do want them to kind of go with a varying amount of outfits or to go with different kind of looks, as the kids say. So yeah, this is the Move 700, which I'm going to have up on screen. If you haven't seen it previously, I'll probably put a picture in the show description. But I'm sure most of you know what it looks like. So the Easy 700... Uh, Yeezy Wave 700 or Yeezy 700, whatever it may be called, in Mobis coming out um, end, of, end of the month, right? I'm sure it says here. Coming out on the 27th, yeah, so on Saturday. They look fucking awesome. It's cool because I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to pick them up quite easily because the first 
the 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 ones that I have, the kind of grey ones, they um they were they were sitting around for ages online. I've seen a lot more people wear them because I think Shoreditch is a good kind of um barometer to see what the common folk are wearing because it's usually just like general hipsters, right? Um, they're not necessarily full on sneaker heads, so you get an idea of what's really popular in the quote unquote streets. And I'm seeing a lot more people around Shoreditch wearing 700s nowadays than I did previously. Before I, I was probably the only person that I saw wearing a pair of 700s or like a random ch person from China. But now I'm seeing loads of people wearing 700s. Just the same way, not not in the same extent as Yeezys, but probably gearing towards that mark. Because again, I think probably because they sat around long enough, they're Yeezys, they're a bit special looking. You know, they're special looking without looking super, super out there. Uh, a lot of people can wear them. So yeah, so these Mervs look fucking awesome. I can't wait to get a pair. I'm sure I'll be able to get a pair quite easily via retail. But I love, I love them. I feel they look really, really, really fucking nice. These pictures on Hypebeast look cool too. With that, I think I mentioned before, sneaker photography is pretty shit. Especially when it's like someone on foot. Same old stuff. Pin rolls, you know. Um, a tattoo on his leg emphasizing that or some bullshit or the person bending down with you know pulling up the tongue of the trainer with their rings and tattoo hand tattoos showing it's all the same shit but sometimes sneaker photography itself the actual product shots are quite nice especially these ones they did it quite well you know um you know I, there was not much creativity with it you know putting them against a kind of mauve backdrop you know loads of wood um loads of concrete and whatever it may be but they look really really nice i've got to be honest the, the yellow pop on the midsole really really stands out with that mauve colorway and yeah i'm definitely going to try and get a pair one million percent i just noticed too it's a gum sole on these 700s too that looks fucking sick they look really, really they look really sexy i've got to be honest hate to use that term to describe trainers but they do they look really really fucking nice so yeah um october this 27th they'll be available to buy in most places i'm assuming so yeah um that's it for me nice half an hour there tightly wrapped up for you listeners thanks again for tuning in this has been the excellent zinger show episode number 118 as always for more information regarding moi and all things i do regarding uh djing uh writing on my blog if you want to contact me um, i'm going to pop some photography pictures hopefully soon as well that i'm getting developed over the weekend so i have some new film things to put up i'm going to put those up on my instagram too because i haven't been putting up anything on there too for all that and more, check out my website, exnozinga.com, and you can find a link on the show notes description. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow for a regular scheduled programming. Nice and long episode, but for now, see you very soon. Peace.